It's becoming more and more apparent to the neuroscience community that the brain waves are involved in many cognitive functions, executive functions, and are no longer just good for detecting seizures, for example. However, traditionally, we have been looking at brain waves at a local, a specific part of the brain. Let's say we in, we're investigating one region of the brain and as a result, we have been focusing on looking at the brain waves for that particular region. However, most recently, more and more scientists are coming forward and talking about something that we call traveling waves. Traveling waves in the physics realm, it's defined a little bit differently, but in the neuroscience realm, it is defined as a brain wave <coughs> neuro oscillation that is not local just to one section, one region of the brain, but it is a type of neuro oscillation, aka brain waves, that is traveling between different regions. It could be between two regions or among different spaces and different regions of the brain. Realizing that we should perhaps look at the brain waves as traveling waves and not just only stationary brain waves opens a lot of doors in terms of us not only investigating but understanding and realizing different brain functions, different cognitive processes in a traveling wave pattern manner as opposed to just the brain waves stationary manner. Another big question that comes up, tend to come up at least that we still don't know the answer to is, do the brain waves emanate and cre create as a byproduct of the individual neurons' activities, or is it something that is there to help the neural activities to, for example, propagate um, to different brain regions? In other words, is the, it's, it's a little bit of a chicken and the egg question. Which ones come first? I have asked that question several times, and I've even directly asked professors, and we still don't know. I personally have some theories, but that's for another video. One of the most important things in which looking at brain waves as traveling waves, as opposed to just stationary waves, helps us explain many of the behavioral and cognitive functions that we perform as humans on a daily basis. For example, on a daily basis, we tend to complete and perform different tasks simultaneously. And these different tasks include different regions of the brain. For example, you can walk to a coffee shop, get your coffee while um, carrying your phone and reading the news on your phone while walking, for example. These are all different behaviors and different cognitive functions that you are, for example, performing just in an instance of maybe a couple of minutes, but not knowingly, there are many different brain regions that are being collaborating and working together for us to perform such seamless, seemingly um, unimportant tasks. Um, and looking at these cognitive functions in lieu of traveling waves, it makes us explain and explore these different cognitive functions much better than what we did in the past where we just look at the brain waves as stationary waves. Another one of these very quickly cognitive processes that we tend to uh, perform without even thinking about it is, for example, recalling memories 
as well as building or creating new memories. Let's say that we walk into a new space and we are getting ourselves familiar with that new space, that is when we are creating new memories. But at the same time, while we are in that new space or new environment, we might do, or we certainly do, perform tasks that we are already, uh, for example, familiar with. Let's say it's a new space and you see a person that you're already recognizing. So in the very short amount of time, essentially you are performing several different tasks that are extremely complex if you think about it, recalling something as well as creating a new memory simultaneously. And this is also another way in which traveling waves tend to help us make these cognitive processes and investigating them a little bit easier because one of the bigger questions is that how can brain regions talk to each other, collaborate with each other, cooperate with each other so rapidly and so quickly and so seamlessly. Temporal binding is another very sophisticated mechanism that we tend to do seamlessly, but when you look at it at a detailed level in the brain, it's a very complex. And temporal binding essentially is a phenomenon where we can connect different situations, different events happening during different time and put them together as a sequential event. And that is, as a researcher and as a scientist, when you look at these different mechanisms, they're extremely complex that is happening in the brain, but we on a day-to-day -day basis do it very seamlessly and without even thinking about it. Here too, the scientists are making the connections between traveling waves and the temporal binding phenomena because it makes it easier to explain how we are able to very quickly put together different events that are seemingly separate from one another, put them in, sequel, um, in a sequence that we tend to then recall and remember. And us thinking about brain waves in a stationary way makes, it, makes this phenomenon very difficult to explain. But if we, think, if we think about brain waves or neuro oscillation traveling across the cortex of the brain seamlessly back and forth and making these connections happening, it makes it a bit easier to also look at the temporal bindings phenomena and how it magically works in our brain. It also appears that the direction in which these traveling waves travel have something to do with the behavior. In other words, it appears that if we know the direction of the traveling waves, we are able to predict some of these behaviors. For example, when we recall something from a memory, the traveling waves appear to go from front of the brain to the back of the brain, and vice versa, from back of the brain to the front of the brain when we are creating new memories. So going back to the example that I just brought up, you're walking into a very new space, so you're creating memories. Traveling waves travel differently in a different direction. And if you meet a person that you already know in that new environment, then the traveling waves changing direction based on you recalling that person. So not only the timing of the traveling waves appear to communicate something to the brain, but also the direction of the traveling waves communicates information among these different neural networks. Other studies showed distinct oscillations in this case, theta and alpha brain waves to be part of the traveling waves and uh, memory creation and or recall. 
um, the frequencies that they investigated, specifically the theta and alpha, was anywhere between 2 hertz to 13 hertz. So it's a little bit of a theta-alpha band that they looked at. And these waves, in particular this one that they were studying, were part of the traveling waves that was traveling across the cortex between distinct regions of the brain that had to do with the recollection as well as the creation of memory for the distinct tasks that the scientists had the participants perform, for example. In other words, it appears that there are different studies that are emerging more and more as we move forward, especially in the past few years, where the scientists are showing, although small portion of the um, findings show that, but as you already know, we build knowledge up, up upon each other, and taking these baby steps is making these scientists um, take a different stance in terms of how we look at brain waves, aka neural oscillation, when we're trying to um, discuss and investigate and research our brain. In other words, the scientists are trying to say that if we shift our perception from stationary brain waves to traveling brain waves, many of the questions that we've had in the past might be easier than to be answered as opposed to us just thinking about one local and one space of the brain. However, the challenge becomes though is that when you look at a brain waves, it's really hard, at least up until now, to distinguish where exactly that brain waves is coming from. Because when you look at brain waves in general, you tend to say that this region or this location emanated or showed these, let's say, beta frequencies. But we all we know that each neuron there are a lot of we know that there are many individual neurons that are working together and so one of the challenges is for us to figure out exactly where those oscillation come from this might not be a challenge if for example we find out in the future that the um, total sum of all the brain waves we're still able to, you know, use them to understand specific cognitive function. But it does become an issue if we were, when we specifically want to know which exact network and or which exact individual neuron created that wave of electricity wave of oscillation because at the end of the day all these oscillations show electrical activities in the brain it's just, it's not the chemical part we already talked about that's for example our neurotransmitters but anytime we talk about waves we're talking we're talking electricity and so for that reason it becomes very hard to kind of distinguish where these electrical impulses come from if they are from one individual neurons or the neural network we already know that they come from the network but can we then in the future distinguish between which individual neuron emanated which electrical pattern.